Hello everyone, welcome to basic electronics tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss about covalent bonding and intrinsic materials. In my previous video, we learned that silicon, germanium and gallium arsenide are the semiconductors of choice in constructing electronic devices. To understand why these semiconductors are the choice for the electronic industry, in this video, I will discuss about their atomic structure. Further, I will also discuss about how the atoms are bound together to form the crystalline structure. We know that the fundamental components of an atom are electron, proton and neutron. In the lattice structure, neutrons and protons form the nucleus and electrons appear in fixed orbits around the nucleus. To understand the lattice structure of these semiconductors better, let us now refer to the Bohr model for these three materials. Figure 1 here indicates the Bohr's model for silicon and germanium. And figure 2 here indicates the Bohr's model for gallium arsenide. Let me first discuss silicon and germanium first. We note from figure A here that silicon has 14 orbiting electrons and germanium has 32 orbiting electrons. Similarly, gallium has 31 orbiting electrons and arsenic has 33 orbiting electrons. Coming back to the silicon and germanium, note that both silicon and germanium have 4 electrons in the outermost shell. These electrons are referred to as valence electrons. From figure 2 that is for gallium arsenide, we note that gallium has 3 valence electrons and arsenic has 5 valence electrons. Please note, atoms that have 4 valence electrons are called tetravalent, those with 3 valence electrons are called trivalent and those with 5 valence electrons are called pentavalent. Since we have been talking about valence electrons, let us now try to understand what does the term valence indicate. The term valence is used to indicate that the potential required to remove any of these electrons from the atomic structure is significantly lower than that required for any other electron in the same structure. That is, it takes considerably lesser potential to remove valence electrons from the atomic structure than other electrons that appear in the inner orbits. The potential required to remove electrons from the innermost orbit will be maximum compared to electrons in the outer orbits. Let us now look at the covalent bonding diagrams for these semiconductors. Figure 3 here indicates the covalent bonding for the silicon atom. Please note that germanium atom will also have an identical structure. We have previously learned that both silicon and germanium have four valence electrons. These four valence electrons of one atom form a bonding arrangement with four adjoining atoms. This bonding of atoms done by sharing electrons is called covalent bonding. This particular structure what we have shown here for each of the silicon atom is called as a covalent bond. Please note that this particular diagram has a single crystal structure. That is we have the same atom that is silicon appearing everywhere. Figure 4 here indicates the covalent bonding for gallium arsenide. Since gallium arsenide is a compound semiconductor, there is sharing between two different atoms that is gallium and arsenide. Please note, each atom, either gallium or arsenide, is surrounded by atoms of the complementary type. That is, each gallium atom is surrounded by three arsenide atoms and each arsenide atom is surrounded by five gallium atoms. Although the covalent bond will result in a stronger bond between the valence electrons and their parent atom, it is still possible for the valence electrons to absorb sufficient kinetic energy from external natural causes 
to break the covalent bond and assume the free state. Please note that when we call an electron as a free electron, it indicates that the electron is separated from the fixed lattice structure. Such free electrons are very sensitive to any external applied electric fields. Examples for external causes are light energy in the form of photons or thermal or heat energy from the surrounding medium. To give you an idea about the free electron concentration, you should note that there are approximately 1.5 into 10 to the power of 10 free electrons in 1 centimeter cube of intrinsic silicon material. This is equal to 15 billion electrons in a space that is smaller than a small sugar cube. Please note, this is an enormous number. Now that we have used the term intrinsic, let us understand what is an intrinsic semiconductor. The term intrinsic is applied to any semiconductor material that has been carefully refined to reduce the number of impurities to a very low level. When I say very low level, it is essentially as pure as that can be made available through the modern technology. So, what are intrinsic carriers? The free electrons in a semiconductor material, which are caused due to external causes, are referred to as intrinsic carriers. Let us now understand the intrinsic carrier concentration for the three semiconductor materials we have considered for this discussion. Table 1 shown here compares the number of intrinsic carriers per cubic centimeter for gallium arsenide, silicon and germanium. Please note the intrinsic carrier concentration is abbreviated as Ni. From the table we note that germanium has the highest number of intrinsic carriers per cubic centimeter and gallium arsenide has the lowest number of intrinsic carriers per cubic centimeter. In fact, if you look at this very closely, you will note that germanium has almost twice the number of intrinsic carriers per cubic centimeter compared to gallium arsenide. So, how does this intrinsic carrier concentration affect the characteristics of the device? To understand that, let us look into table 2, which indicates the knee voltage for the diodes that are made from gallium arsenide, silicon and germanium. If you look at the values of the knee voltage or the turn on voltage for these three devices, you will note that germanium has the lowest value of knee voltage because it has the highest number of intrinsic carriers per cubic centimeter. In a similar approximation, since gallium arsenide has the lowest number of intrinsic carriers per cubic centimeter, it has the highest value of the knee voltage. Please note that these values in the table 1 and table 2 complement each other. Higher the value of intrinsic carriers per cubic centimeter, lower the value of the knee voltage required to turn on the device. Although the number of carriers in the intrinsic form is very important, there are other characteristics of the semiconductor material which are more significant in determining its use in the field. One such factor is the relative mobility of the free carriers in the material. So, what is relative mobility? It is the ability of the free carriers to move throughout the material. Please note, relative mobility is abbreviated by mu subscript n. Table 3 here lists the relative mobility factor for silicon, germanium and gallium arsenide. From this table, we note that the free carriers in gallium arsenide have more than 5 times the mobility of free carriers in the silicon. This means that the electronic devices made from gallium arsenide provide response times up to 5 times those of the same made from silicon. In a similar fashion, note that the free carriers in germanium have more than twice the mobility compared to that of the silicon. This means that the electronic devices made from germanium provide response times up to two times those of the same devices made from silicon. In simple words, I can say that the devices made from gallium arsenide are five times faster compared to that of silicon. 
and devices made from germanium are two times faster as compared to those made from silicon. In my previous video, when I was discussing the semiconductor materials, we learned that germanium is now quite rarely used in the electronics industry. However, it is not completely ruled out and the relative mobility of the electrons in the germanium is one of the main reasons why germanium is continued to be used in high speed radio frequency applications. Coming to the last part of this discussion, let us now discuss about the temperature coefficient of these semiconductor materials. One of the basic differences between semiconductors and conductors is their reaction to the application of heat. For conductors, the resistance increases with an increase in the heat. This is because the number of carriers in a conductor do not increase significantly with temperature. Materials that react in this manner are said to have a positive temperature coefficient. On the other hand, for the semiconductors, the resistance decreases with an increase in the heat. Therefore, semiconductor materials exhibit an increased level of conductivity with the application of heat. This is obvious because we have previously learned that valence electrons absorb thermal energy and become free electrons. As the number of free electrons in the semiconductor increases, its conductivity also increases. Therefore, we can now say that semiconductor materials have a negative temperature coefficient. Right, that is about the discussion on covalent bonding and intrinsic materials. In my next video, I'll discuss about energy levels and energy level diagrams for these three semiconductors. So, stay tuned. Well, that is about this video. If you like this video, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on basic electronics. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.